I'm gonna take you on an adventure today through multiple videos that lead us to an ultimate conversation about why we think the way we think, how we come to our conclusions, and if we even understand what we mean when we say things. Okay, so let's start with Hank Green. I pre-watched this video, it's a really good video. He's gonna explain bubbles in a way that I think is really important to recognize, and I love seeing him recognize it. Good morning, John, congrats. You picked a really amazing month to take off. I am, on the other hand, absolutely going through it, and in public nonetheless. But why? Like why, in the aftermath of any major event, like the attempted assassination of Donald Trump, do I get so stuck on the internet? Catherine actually asked me why this happens to me, and I didn't know the answer. The first thing I said was, I, I do not think I can explain to you my relationship with the news. But we kept chatting and she, she like wondered if it's that I feel like I need to make content about it and so I need to know about it. And I think the answer to that is like, yes, but not the way it sounds. I don't feel like I need to make content about major things that happen in the world, but major things happening in the world makes me think stuff. And then- Ooh, this is really important. He's saying he's not like a lol cow. He's not just trying to talk about stuff because it's popular and he wants to trend. He's saying, hey, when these things happen, I end up going down a spiral where I wonder why. This is relatable. Me and Hank, we on the same page. Where it's not like I'm trying to make content to get in the views. I'm literally curious about why. And you, and your lack of curiosity is clear. Not you, my audience. But like the people that like come on my channel when I do something more trending and people just have the most like bubble takes, which is fair. We all live in bubbles, even me. We all live in bubbles. We all have a perception of reality, right? And Hank's gonna explain this in a really beautiful way, but we all have our own perception with our own very limited amount of information. Very limited. And instead of standing on the shoulders of giants, when you start being conspiracy theories, when you start doubting the world is educated, when you start doubting the audacity of people to come at me this week with conspiracy theories from the left and the right is so frustrating. All of you are just spouting misinformation and continually doing so because you're fearful and fear is the root of all evil and I am not interested. I am not interested in having that conversation with you. If everything that happens becomes a conspiracy to you about how some other side, the side you're not a part of, is really out here to get you. Really? Y'all think you're, it's like the religious thinking they, they were magically born into the right religion. It's like y'all think you're magically in the right political association, in the right political group. Really? You never thought that your side might also be contributing to misinformation to some extent? Maybe less so to some extent, but come on, okay? And then I want to share those thoughts. And sometimes I don't share those thoughts because I like, can't be convinced that they would actually make things any better. So there are lots of thoughts that I don't share, but I am looking for the thoughts that I have that might be helpful and thinking that thought made me realize why I doom scroll. What I am doing in the moments after significant events is not trying to figure out what content to make about it, what tweets to tweet. I'm trying to figure out what world I live in now. Mm -hmm. The world has clearly changed and that unsettles me and it makes me uncomfortable. I had a Okay. The world has changed. I am 35. I think Hank is in his 40s now. I am not uncomfortable with the, how the world is changing, probably because I'm very comfortable with how I have changed. And look, I have been a comforter to people this week from, again, both left and right calling me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. The world is changing. This thing will happen. Brittany, you have to do this. Brit and I'm, I swear to God, if you come at me with your negative energy and your fear and your misinformation one more time. This is not 1984. And if I hear one more person, progressive or conservative, who tell me, Brittany, this is 1984. I swear to God, you have not read that book. Have you even read that book? What are you even referencing when you say it out loud? It's enough. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what kind of a world I feel like I'm in right now. And I'm just telling you right now what I'm doing. I feel like we're all in a boat. And the boat was going smoothly for a time, but starts to rock. And then we settle it back down. And then all of a sudden... Someone starts to tip the boat and you're like, hey, stop tipping the boat. We're going to we're going to capsize if you keep doing that. And someone goes, isn't that funny? Tip, tip. And then the other side goes, hey, stop tipping the boat. We're going to capsize. And then Trump's in the background throwing firecrackers, at everybody. You know what I mean? And then the other side goes, well, if you're going to tip the boat, I'm going to capsize the boat first. And they start tipping the boat. And I'm sitting here like, stop tipping the boat. 
And then they all start freaking out and they're trying to sell it each other down, but they start yelling and then everyone's yelling and then the boat's tipping anyways because nobody will come down, come down. And then as you guys are busy fighting and tipping the boat and it's about to capsize, I'm just gonna peace out with my life vest and my other mini boat because you all won't listen past your own ears. You are all yelling at each other like children. And then you're sitting here talking about how you're doing the higher moral ground. If I swear to God, you say 1984 one more time, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay? I'm gonna slap you figuratively. I'm gonna, I'm so sick of hearing grown adults be like, it's 1984. You've never read that book and it shows. This isn't anything more than life. You have fully not accepted your living history and it shows. And I'm annoyed with all of you. And as you tip this boat over, know that I've already left it. A vision of how the world existed and what might be coming. And when that vision gets disturbed, I want to find information that either lets me settle back into my previous set of explanations for how the world works, or it gives me a new understanding of the world. I'm just looking for the, like the comfort of understanding. Now this in itself, is a form of bias. It's recency bias. I'm thinking that the attempted assassination is a huge deal that's going to fundamentally change the world because things that happen recently feel more important than things that happened in the past. And of course, the assassination attempt is a very big deal. But also on Sunday, everybody was saying like, Donald Trump is definitely going to win now. I basically texted that to you, John. But now we've seen that the assassination attempt does not seem to have changed the polling numbers much. But also, what I saw as I doom scrolled was legitimately stuff that did help me understand what world we were heading into. Most importantly, like the identity of the murderer. He was white and American and not a recent immigrant. And I am of the opinion that if he had been any other kind of person, despite the fact that it still would have been like one disturbed guy pulling one trigger, the narrative would have been entirely different. Now look, mm -hmm. a different set of identities. Of course it would have been different. It would have had to have been. And that's why the media is so irresponsible with the way that it's, you know, been going in the last 10, 15 years, because even they are amplifying the fear that is so unnecessary. It's just really unnecessary. Now, I think fear is the root of all evil in a philosophy sense because it moves you away from your joy. When you're afraid, you make the wrong decisions. When you're self-aware, you make, you know, decisions with discernment. Okay. But if you start freaking out, you're going to want to be like, I have to get on top of it before the world ends. I have to get on top of the enemy. Who's the enemy? You choose the enemy and then you make the enemy out of the enemy. No one is your enemy in a world in which you do not make enemies. To make enemies is to cause the issue in the first place. And the world continues to pick enemies. And sometimes it's your own family members. And it's outrageously silly to me. But okay, you do you. Humans are going to human, right? So I'm not sitting here telling you this isn't going to... By the way, this is going to happen. It's going to happen in cycles for the rest of the universe. So I am not here to stop it from happening. I'm just here to let you guys know it's going to happen. So you might as well enjoy your life. Because the people who've decided, the majority, the world's a reflection of the majority, have decided they continue to want enemies. Whether it's Republicans or progressives or liberals or Democrats or whoever, they have decided there is an enemy. And it's you. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with that? And it's all because of our bubbles and our perceptions, which are limited. But if I swear to God, if I have one more person message me and say, you know, uh, Kamala is really stupid. You know that um, she's a Harvard grad. Shut the fuck up. You barely graduated high school. Oh, do you know she's not even black? I swear to God, just Google it. OK. Oh, did you know like Kamala is an idiot, but Trump, he knows what he's doing. I'm going to fucking slap you. And on top of that, all these progressives talking about how the assassination attempt was totally orchestrated by Trumpians. You don't know shit, bro. You don't know anything. Whatever you are saying, you've pulled out of your ass. And so you belong with Trump. All of you are assholes and you know it. You've pulled all of this information out of your little butts and they're not even cute enough. Okay, so stop it. This guy would not have changed. Oh yeah. And this white boy shooter, Oh, he's not actually a Republican. He donated 15 whole dollars to a progressive organization. Oh, he's not really a progressive, though, because he was a registered Republican. Oh, he, he was a person who made a decision. Now, Hank is going to say it best, so let's let Hank do it. The reality and the tragedy of what happened, but it would have changed the narrative. It would have given us more to yell at each other about. And more reasons for people to be scared of people that they are already overly afraid of. So I exactly. feel weird about saying this, but the fact that he was a white American born and raised 
did take the temperature down. And that was an important thing to find out. And that's broadly the kind of stuff we're searching for. We want to know not just how bad it is for the people injured or killed, but how bad it's going to be for everyone. How much more is this going to increase the temperature at an already very hot moment in America? And so I will say, though keep watching after I finish this sentence, there is something rational about doom scrolling. It isn't just a self-destructive act, it is a self-protective act as well. But we have to recognize that when we try to understand some new part of our world, we are doing two things. We are taking information and changing our understanding of reality based on that information, but just as much our brains are fighting to fit information into our previous conception of reality. I want Do you hear this? He said it perfect. This is why everyone is biased and prejudiced. Do you know how many people I have talked to who are like, do you know Russia is a beautiful place? Like Russia is about freedom. Don't lecture me about Russia being a place of freedom. I will slap you. Okay. People are sitting here being like, you know, my country is the most free. Your country just beat up marginalized communities. You know, my country is the most free. Your country just voted civil rights away for this minority community. Oh, you know, my country is the I will slap you. I will super saiyan slap you. Humans are doing the best they can and the best they can do is give in to their bias and prejudice and sometimes on occasion not. And when the not happens, you get genuine growth. Growth that is life changing, culture changing. If you keep giving into your bias and prejudice, you will not change culture. You will return to the cycle, which is happening on the on the in the general, because the majority is too in their bias and prejudice. Period. And it stems from fear, because at least I go back to something I know. Do you know how many people I've talked to this week, and all of them come to me and they'll start venting. And they'll think somehow like I'm on their side because I'm an agreeable listener. But let me just tell you, all of you are fucking uneducated and none of you know fucking your left hand from your right hand. Read a goddamn book or shut the fuck up. But also, even if you've read a thousand books, you're still a fucking idiot. Human beings are so fucking dumb and yet we're so fucking smart, but we are making shit up every day. We make shit up about everything. Medications, war tactics, borderline personality disorder, if I hear one more goddamn quote fact that is just a bunch of misinformation, I will slap the mother effing f out of you, bro. With peace and love, I will do it with the love of the Virgin Mary herself. Shut the fuck up. If I hear one more goddamn fucking piece of misinformation from somebody who thinks they're a fucking genius because they know everything that happened behind the scenes of a situation they know nothing about, I will slap the ever living shit out of you. But I also desperately do not want to get into the weeds of conspiracy theories here because those people can get a little scary. So let's just take one single thing. Was Thomas Crooks more of a progressive or more of a conservative? If you're progressive, it's gonna be more comfortable and better for your cause if he was more conservative. And if you're more conservative, it's gonna be more comfortable and better for your cause for him to be progressive. And one of the very first things that came out after his identity was his voter registration and political donations. He was a registered Republican and he once gave $15 to a progressive get out the vote organization. He was also wearing a shirt from a gun-focused YouTube channel. Then later we heard that he once told a classmate that that classmate was stupid for supporting Trump. And now, we we have enough information to pick and choose from to build whichever narrative we would mm -hmm. like. And also we can work to discredit the- All we need is one piece of information to build a narrative. Tell me this person's skin color and I will tell you a whole fucking made up narrative that you will believe. Tell me this person's hair color and I will create a backstory so believable somebody will print it. Tell me the size of their hands and I could make you a presidential speech so good Trump will read it at his next, you know, rally. This is how stupid human beings are. We need one piece of information and we could make a bullshit narrative that we push out into the media, fear monger with, and then what? Continue the cycle of bullshit. And then you have the audacity to sit on some moral high ground as being better. Information that that we don't like, so we don't have to believe it. Like you might see a conservative saying, no, he only registered as a Republican in order to vote against Trump in the primary, mm -hmm. which I don't know, maybe, but anyone saying that has no idea if it's true or not. And also being like a huge fan of guns isn't generally a liberal thing. And also there are almost certainly people watching this right now who think that Crooks' donation to a progressive organization was actually some 69 year old in Pittsburgh, but it was 
Thomas Crook's The Assassin four years ago when he was 17. There was a tweet that went viral that linked the donation with the 69-year-old, but it didn't actually link anything to anyone. It just posted the fact that there was a 69-year-old in Pittsburgh who's named Thomas Crooks, who, by the way, I hope is doing well after what has had to have been a pretty weird week. But the record of the donation listed Crooks' address. It had just been blacked out on the social media screenshot for obvious reasons. So yes, it was him. The point is, there's enough information, supposition, and incorrect correct information to tell either story, but not mm -hmm. so much that these stories became a broader shared narrative. Instead, people saw the things that the folks in their bubbles shared, and instead of a Oh, did the king say bubble? He did. And we all live in bubbles. You can't escape them. Your bubble is your perception. That's why I think bubbles are everywhere and there's billions of them, because it's your perception of information. Look, we review people all of the time. And we sit here and we go, oh, look, they're like coming from this perspective. That's the bubble. The bubble is the perspective. Animals live in bubbles. We all live in bubbles. The moment you have a perception, and even outside of the perception, because somebody's perceiving you, there is a bubble. The bubble is the understanding of what I can see and process as information and as true. I've talked to so many people this week, and literally, it doesn't even matter their, their political background. They're all conspiracy theorists. And I'm over it. You know I don't like conspiracy theory theories because it's bad information. You guys are building theories off of bad data. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you build your whole life on bad data? It makes no fucking sense. It's so inefficient, but you do you. I understand the whole world was built off bad data, so why not? The world is continually built off bad data, which is fine. It's why humans at the most superficial level are pretty competent and functional. But if you want to be higher thinkers, if you want to have a better existence, then you've got to do the work of realizing you have bias and prejudice, period. And then you have to make a decision if you're okay with that. But fear mongering and causing this back and forth is so unnecessary. It's so unnecessary. But let's, again, Hank says it's so good. Shared narrative, a shared version of reality. People get to form their specially crafted, comfortable realities. We aren't. And by the way, you don't have to. Because Mimi says you can sure you can sure be trapped in bubbles. That's the part I find scary. Okay, I just want to say this. I don't think it's wrong for people to live in bubbles. Obviously, I live in a bubble. I don't think it's wrong for people to live in a bubble that's different from mine. I think if your bubble is advocating for the genocide of another group, I think if your bubble is advocating for the discrimination of another group, unnecessarily so, I think if your bubble is causing more harm than good, then we need to reevaluate the bubble. If not for the sake of your future children, then for the sake of the people that are alive today, because it's annoying. And there are too many people that aren't considering that. No, of course they won't. Look, my work is not about the bubbles at large because I think humans are going to do what they want en masse. It's like trying to control a, 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 like a school of fish. Like, I'm not trying to do that. You know, I'm not trying to do that. But if one little fucking fish goes, hey, I want to do something different than the school of fish. Cool. And there's nothing wrong with being in the school of fish, right? There's nothing ethically, morally wrong. But you are, you know, causing a little bit more harm than good. Like you, you can do what you want. I just don't want to make up, up, uh, I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to say you should live the way I live. I'm trying to say, what if you live the way you want to live, but it also didn't include murdering other people. And it also didn't include like the subjugation of a whole group. And it also didn't include like, is this possible? Can we come to this compromise? You don't have to. Absolutely. And I'm not looking to move humanity. Humanity is what it is. I'm, I could never dream of impacting humanity. I can only ever dream of impacting one, two, 10 people who might then go out and impact their communities in a much better way, right? There's nothing wrong with living a religious life, living a vegan life, living a gay life. There's nothing wrong with living your life. But we need to be more responsible in many ways about when we're being serious and when we're not. And there's something very serious about realizing that you live in a bubble that I don't think most people are open to, which is why I hear things like, do you know Kamala Harris is an idiot? Kamala Harris graduated from Harvard. She went to fucking Harvard. If we're not gonna trust our institutions, what the, like they're not perfect because nobody is, but I am so tired of people. So you don't trust the colleges. You don't trust anybody. You don't trust these people. Nobody trusts anybody. If you start not trusting literally anybody, especially yourself, that's it. And it all started with you because you're the one who's not trusting anybody. You are the problem. If you do not trust your fellow neighbor to do right by you, 
you are a part of the problem. It's not your neighbor that you don't trust, it's you. Because you are the starting point of the trust relationship. And then you build that trust with your neighbor. And then your neighbor trusts you because you have signaled to one another to trust each other. And if you start distrusting one another for petty, stupid reasons, then you are the, f- the one who's responsible. I'm not gonna say at fault, but I'm gonna say you're the contributor, okay? I don't wanna put blame on people, but you are contributing. And so the world is a reflection of us as a whole. You can't ask the world to trust. You can't ask people to do better when you mistreat the people in your life, when you're the one going around spreading misinformation about people. It's okay to correct yourself. It's okay to come back. It's okay to say, I did something wrong and I wanna grow from this. But you are absolutely contributing to that cycle when you call me and you say, hey, I think we're in 1984. We're not in 1984. Just trying to figure out what universe we're living in and to redefine our stories to fit with reality, we inevitably pick and choose the pieces of reality that fit the stories we are comfortable Ding, ding, ding. We pick and choose the pieces of reality that fit the narrative or story we are comfortable with. Trump is a good, upstanding person, but Kamala Harris isn't. They stole the election from Hillary Clinton, but I wouldn't have voted for her anyways. Oh my gosh, the Democrats hate black people because they always think they're so stupid they can't take care of themselves, while Republicans are literally dismantling any, any, any government assistance to help marginalized communities. Oh, women, they, they need men to guide them. But also, I don't want the government in our business. Oh, but unless it has to do with our bodies. I I get it. I get why you play these games. I understand it, but it's inefficient. So you do you. But as individuals, the greatest skill I can give you, the greatest skill I could give a progressive is to be able to empathize with a conservative, like a, like a 2025, Project 2025 conservative. Because when I read Project 2025, I'm like, yep, yeah, sounds about right. Sounds about conservative. I feel like y'all do not know conservatives and it shows. Everyone in my comment section who's like, Brittany obviously doesn't know about Project 2025. I grew up the last 30 years in politics. You think anything in Project 2025 is a shock to me? Grow the fuck up. It's like you guys just learned about Republicans. You must be kidding me. You must be joking. All of the political corruption since the beginning of the founding of this goddamn country. Not, well, I'm in Croatia, but goddamn America and you're gonna cry to me about Project 2025? How could you be shocked at something that was so predictable? Because you weren't paying attention. And also, you forgot that your perception isn't everybody's. There are so many people that want a world like Project 2025 wants to create. And the fact that you're in denial of that is interesting. And the fact that you can't empathize with that is the reason. Because you think they would be miserable in that world. You have to contend with the fact that billions of people would be more than fine in a world that is that strict, at least in theory. And then we put it into practice and I bet you they're gonna complain. I bet you the same people who want Project 2025 are gonna complain about it when it starts hitting their homes. The same way these pro-lifers were so bitchy and moany when they couldn't get their abortions when they had their ectopic pregnancies, which they should be able to have. Do you remember that woman who voted pro-life? and voted anti-abortion, and then she had an ectopic pregnancy, and her doctor wouldn't let, get, wouldn't let her get the abortion. And she said, I regret this. Of course you do. Because in theory, all of these things sound good until you put them into practice. But we can't put them into practice because you guys freak out instead of calmly explaining, like, I don't think that's gonna work. When people freak out, I don't know if you've noticed this, people wanna do the opposite because they see you freaking out in a way that's so unreasonable. And now they think you're stupid and they think whatever you were saying was stupid. And now they're like, I'm gonna do something else. And look, a lot of us are autistic, neurodivergent, a lot of us, PDA, a lot of people gonna hear you say something and gonna do the opposite just because you piss them off like neurotypically, neurodivergently. I, we are playing a psychological game here, okay? We are playing a psychological game. And if you play it right, your side wins. And if you play it wrong, your side loses. But the side that psychologically impacts the majority enough makes the decisions. And ultimately the majority is moved by the idea of Trump getting shot being like he won the election is a psychological effect. Oh my God, this man who said fight, fight, fight. That's the man who's gonna win now. All because of this one thing. But like Hing showed, the polling doesn't show that. And I see Gen Z getting ready to vote Kamala. I love that. Okay, I see Gen Z firing up. You should. She's smart, inefficient. The misinformation spread about this woman is insane, including but not limited to how many people she put in prison during her reign. So listen to me when I say this. 
Go do your own research, but then decide. What kind of a world do you want to live in and then do it? You don't sink down to the people that you think are bad, their level, and go, I want a better world. Well, then start acting like it. But you can't en masse because the world isn't ready. So you have to do it as an individual. And then you have to let go of the burden of thinking you were going to change the world because nobody ever does. One person does not change the world. But one person does change enough people to shift the narrative slightly. Culture is dictated by the one person who moves a sea of people, but not the world. You know, one of my favorite videos on TikTok that I love to watch, one of the series is when they go to like Japan or China. I think it's China. And they interview like Chinese people on the street and they say, who is the celebrity? And they can't name some of the most famous people in our bubble. And this is a good reminder that when you think, oh, I'm going to change the world, you're going to change a small bubble on a planet and that's good enough. Okay? That is good enough. Okay? And you have to, like, people have to understand that this narrative of like, it's going to change. The, like Hank said, you think President Trump shooting, getting shot at is like this big, oh my God. <laughs> Just another day in politics, baby. It's sad, but it's another day in human destruction. And that 20-year-old kid who shot the president, 10 bucks says, he just wanted attention. But we don't know. We don't know why he did it. I don't know. My theory is that he probably just wanted attention. But I don't know. In and already believe. And I know this because there's a third thing here. For me, this means looking at this and saying, that does not seem to be a guy who hated Donald Trump in particular. It's a guy who seems to have hated everything. He Googled where Joe Biden was going to be. He Googled where Donald Trump was going to be. Also Merrick Garland and Christopher Wray and an unnamed member of the British royal family. And that sounds to me like a guy who has been convinced by himself or by external forces that everything is terrible and that it would be a good thing to just hurt the world. But look, I, in that thing I just said, if that sounded really appealing to you, that's us doing literally the same thing. Fitting the facts to my existing conception of the world because I am a little sick of people tearing down absolutely everything at every opportunity. And I'm sick mm -hmm. of the nihilism it creates in our society mm -hmm. generally. And I'm sick of the space that it leaves for strong men to come in and say, only I can fix this, but only if you give me all the power. Because look, there's a fourth option here, and I'm wondering if you can even identify it. It is the one that's definitely true. Not that he was progressive, not that he was conservative, not that he was lonely and despondent and just wanted to be violent. Can you guess what it was? It's that we don't know. It's definitely the truth and also the hardest thing to live inside of. We don't know sucks. Not knowing is so powerful, but also uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable that I, ju I just don't see people doing it much, if at mm -hmm, all. Mm -hmm. Not in public, not loudly, mm -hmm. not on social media. And that's why we scroll, because we hate not knowing. Twitter and its many voices are there to give us what we want. The illusion that our stories are true and that the future is knowable. But we don't get to have that. If you want to have an allegiance to truth, you have to trade in the comfort of constant certainty. John. I'll see you in August. This is the thing that I think is so important. That constant security of knowing the consistency of saying, I, I get, I know what's going on. You don't know what's going on, but I know what's going on. That is the bubble. That's the twos. Twos radically believe that like they know and they picked a bubble that like is the best bubble, that they live in the most reality when in reality they live in the most or the least reality because they have the least amount of information, the ones I think obviously, minus the ones, we're not gonna talk about ones today. Okay, we're not gonna talk about ones today. But twos through fives. Twos are the people who live in a bubble, die in a bubble, and they never think, maybe the world doesn't revolve around me. But not just the world, the universe, right? So this idea of like, we know why the shooter did, we know, we don't know anything. This idea of like, and we're going to cover, you know, the Cody Co conversation later in today's stream about the age of consent. We know Cody's a predator, Brittany. We know. What do you mean by predator? And what do, what do you mean by predator? And what do you mean by no? That's a Jordan Peterson joke for the nerds on this channel. What do you mean by predator? And what do you mean by no? I am not saying this to defend him. I am saying this so we come to the right conclusions to move society forward. 
If we keep coming to bad conclusions, we won't actually move society forward. If you don't want to move society forward, cool. I mean, me neither. Honestly, I think it's going to do what it's going to do. It's like trying to move a hurricane left. I don't think the hurricane cares what direction we want to move it in. Okay, like, let's be real. But at the same time, because it's fun and I like to problem solve, it would be nice if I, in my lifetime before I die, and I'm me meaningless to the universe, but yet important, if I can figure out, why did Cody Co do that? Is it simply just culture? And is it predatory by nature? Because a predator to me is very different than somebody who engages in activity that you can associate with a predator. And I think this lack of introspection or extrospection, this lack of interest and curiosity to find the truth is so human. And so I'm not even judging you for it. I'm just letting you know you're doing it. Because even though you think you're curious and you're open-minded and you're doing these really interesting things with knowledge and information, we all have our limitations, myself included. You guys know we've talked about this in length. I'm not open-minded to all ideas. I'm very close-minded to flat earth. I'm super close-minded to most conspiracy theor theories, if not all of them. I don't want to hear it. But there is a level of open-mindedness that gets you again, towards better data. So what we're looking for is where's the good data? Where does that live? Because conspiracy theories are built off bad data, right? Where's the good data? I had a friend reach out to me this week and they're very like in the conspiracy theory bubble about like the planet and rays and sunshine and clouds and, you know, and they were rattling off something. And I said, hey, you sound like one of those guys who heard thunder for the first time. And they're like, God must be pissed, bro. There's no gods up in the sky, probably. Slam it on drums. Read a book. Do a little bit of research. Go to the fifth grade. Something. You don't have to make up things. You don't have to do it all on your own. You don't have to look at the sky and think, what, do, what does this mean? You can read about it. You can look at the research. You can read the data. And then you can decide if the data is bad. But if you're not even looking at the data, you're simply guessing, what are you doing with your life? DC says voting for the lesser of two evils is participating in evil. All humans engage in evil acts because evil is a construct to say furthest from joy. There's no such thing as evil because then that would, inquire, that would require you to then argue that like the hurricane is evil. Hurricanes are not evil, they are nature. Humans are not evil, they are nature. And yet, it feels evil because it's furthest from joy when a hurricane slams into your house and kills your whole family. But nature itself has no intentionality of evil. I would argue humans barely have any intentionality of evil. To be honest with you, I think humans always do the thing that makes sense to them in the moment and what feels most right, even when it feels wrong. And that's why they do it. In the same way you know you should be at the goddamn gym working out and you don't go, it's because it feels right even when it's wrong. So in my personal opinion, because I think we're evolved animals, which could be very wrong, nothing is evil more than our separation from joy. But even human beings with this like idea of like they must plan evil, sure, they have some intentionality based off of where they are in the moment. But even then, now I don't know if you guys know, but I actually believe in reform. And I believe all human beings are on a journey of their own evolution and relationship to it. And I think that we can only do what we can ever just do. And when people are ready, they'll do something else, but they might never be ready. When I look at Boogie and I see his life, you have one group of people that say, he's obviously mentally ill. And one group of people who say, he's doing it on purpose. And then one group of people say, it's both. Probably a lot of things, but I actually don't think we know exactly what it is yet. Probably because the right person hasn't examined him, examined him. And probably for a lot of things, there's a lot of reasons. But I am kind of curious. Boogie is interesting to me. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's very frustrating because he's unreliable, but most people who are unreliable are frustrating. That's a frustrating type of person to be. Hell, when the weather is unreliable, it's frustrating. Should I wear shoes or heels or sandals or sneakers or barefoot? It's very frustrating when you can't predict what's going to happen. So you can't plan. You can't plan with somebody like Boogie. You can't plan in a place that changes, you know, weather patterns every 10 minutes. And so you learn to let go of the attachment of planning. You learn to let go of the attachment of being able to predict. You learn to go let go of the attachment that it's nothing, anything more than 
a person on their own journey and a person on journey meeting. Hank has always been interesting to me because Hank made a video a very long time ago about on the macro how humans are getting better. And that's true. We're doing better with disease and starvation and all these other things. We're modernizing. Humans aren't linear though. Even though on the macro they basically are, there will be moments when people will go backwards. And I love Kamala's new possible slogan, like don't, we're not going back. Don't go back. And I don't want to go back. But sometimes you got to go back to go forward again, right? Two steps forward, three steps back, two steps forward, three steps back. That's how humans seem to do things. And every new generation will have a new upbringing of its own and they'll figure it out just as, just as we did. But I think Hank perfectly explains like this bubble idea, this perception idea and how bias and prejudice plays into those decisions. Now, of course, you can talk about limitations. I'm open, but with boundaries. That's a saying on this channel. I'm open, but with boundaries. Just because we know this, I know this to be true, I think. I know, I, well, I believe it to be true. Okay, I'll be more accurate with my language. I believe this to be true, that we're animals, that we're doing our best, that it's all within, you know, blah, blah, blah. I still have limitations about how I engage with these things. So some people will say, and this is the, the right I reserve for inner circle. Like, I'll visit you in prison if you do something horrific in the world, for sure. But I'm the kind of person that would call on my family member if they, like, we're a serial killer. I'm calling the cops on you, bro. And some people think that's like, wow, amazing. I could never call the cops on my own sibling. You couldn't call the cops on a sibling member who was murdering people? Weird take, bro. But also pretty common. It is a pretty common take that family members won't turn their family in if they do something horrific. No, I think there's a line in the sand. Some people think they would turn in their own kid if they were smoking marijuana. Do we all agree that we're not going to turn our child into the government for smoking marijuana? But for some people, they believe you should be turned in. That I'm not in that line. I think that's unnecessary. I think people smoking a plant are not meant to go to jail. I think people doing any drugs, I think all drugs should be decriminalized. So when we're having a conversation about who needs to go to prison, it's probably not the weed smokers. And prisons shouldn't be inhumane. They should be places that are humane. But this desire to punish people is also very cultural to a large extent. And America loves to punish. That's why they want to know if they're on the right side. Because they know if they're on the wrong side, they're going to be punished. And our punishments are not fun. We punish people in disgusting ways in this country. Done.